When I first hatched this crazy plan to shove a Tesla powertrain into this 70-year-old British car, I was pretty sure how I was going to get the motor installed. I was just going to shove the whole rear subframe in. This was straightforward and was actually the first thing I did. What I didn't know was where I was going to put the battery. This is not very straightforward. The battery is very large. It does break down into smaller pieces, but those smaller pieces also large. This battery came from the cheaper car, which had a shorter range. I was hoping that these modules would be smaller and easier to package, but they're not. They're the same size as the big battery. They just left out the cells in the middle rows, which does not help me at all. I thought about stacking the modules in the engine bay, but that doesn't work because the engine bay is not long enough, which is weird because it's a really long engine bay. Also, that would probably move my weight balance too far forward. They're also too big for the trunk, even if I extended them under the rear seat. What I can do is fit them under the body between the frame rails, but there are a few issues with this, and we're going to dive into them right now. Packaging batteries in an electric car should be relatively easy because the individual cells are really small, but it's a lot easier to buy a pack that has several cells already assembled, especially one like Tesla's that comes with the battery management system. The Model S and Model X batteries are pretty great for electric swaps because when you open the pack, there are several modules that are small enough to be packaged in different places around your new car. The Chevy Volt is kind of the same way, but their batteries are taller and also kind of large for the amount of energy they store. The Model 3 batteries are not so easy. You can break them down into four smaller modules, but the problem with these is that they're really long. This makes it somewhat difficult, but the Model 3 battery is very power dense, and it also comes with all sorts of neat stuff like the aforementioned battery management system, a DC-DC converter, contactors, pyrofuse, and you can control all of that stuff and the charge port by buying a piece of electronics from a company like Ingenext or by making one from plans found on places like openinverter.org. I'm using all of that stuff, so we're going to start by figuring out how to package that first before we get into these incredibly long modules. If you remember, all of those goodies are mounted in a mound on the top of the battery that Tesla calls the penthouse. You may also remember that I'm going to move it to a different location, and as such, I have decided to rename it from the penthouse to the outhouse. To get it off the battery, I had to cut it away from the top cover of the battery, but before I did that, I had to remove it from the battery, during which I broke my high voltage connector. That meant that I had to split the case of the penthouse, I mean the outhouse, to replace that part. The two covers of the penthouse are glued together with some rubber sealant and it was kind of a pain in the ass to scrape all that off. I added some perimeter bolts to hold it together and make it a little more serviceable in case I need to open it in the future, which I probably will. Put a little foam gasket between the sides to make it somewhat waterproof. I might have been able to reuse the top sheet metal for something. In fact, now that I think about it, there are several things I could have used it for, but I didn't know what at the time, and it's kind of big, and I hate to keep stuff like this around, so I'm going to throw it away. Do not throw in the trash. I'm definitely going to wad this thing up and throw it in the trash. Once I had the outhouse in a neat little package, I had to find a place on the car to put it. Again, I thought about shoving it under the incredibly long hood, but it actually doesn't fit. Giant hood, can't get any part of the battery under it. I also thought about putting it under the rear seat, and this is where it goes on the Tesla, and it almost fits, but not quite. This is partly due to the fact that I modified the rear frame here, and now it interferes with the rear seat bottom. Ew. So where does it fit? The trunk, actually, kind of, barely. It won't just sit on the floor of the trunk because of the wheel wells. This is just as well, because I don't really want my trunk floor to be a weirdly shaped mound of high voltage electronics. I did some CAD modeling to figure out the mounting, and by CAD, of course, I mean cardboard-aided design. It actually looks like it'll fit press up against the front wall of the trunk, which is just the back of the rear seat. I trimmed the cardboard until it fit, and then I used that as a template to trim the outhouse. A few back and forth trims and a quick test fit, and it looks like it'll fit just fine. I still need to clean up the trunk and maybe repaint it, and I don't want to install it for good yet, so I reassembled everything back into the outhouse case, and I shoved it in my crawl space. I forgot to tape over these holes, so there's probably an entire family of mice living in it now, but we'll deal with that later. The first step of getting these modules into the new car is to remove them from the battery case. The outer ones are pretty easy. The inner ones are a pain in the ass. Almost as much of a pain in the ass as they are to reinstall, but definitely less of a pain in the ass than removing the penthouse. I don't know who at Tesla designed this battery case, but I kind of hate you. It's like you didn't even consider the fact that I, Matt Brown, would someday disassemble and repackage this thing into a British car that was built 30 years before lithium-ion batteries were invented. 
but I digress. I assume that the manufacturing and factory service of these modules involve some sort of giant suction cup on a crane. If you don't have one of these, you have to shimmy a strap under the battery on each side and then hoist it out. This is a little nerve wracking since these modules are high voltage and uh, I probably should have used gloves on this, but whatever. They're also a little fragile on the underside. The modules take up half the floor area of a car and so does the case. So if you're doing this in a two car garage like me, you might need to expand into the driveway. Also, this board here with the tiny little wires, very fragile looking. The modules are even more difficult to reinstall, but we'll get to that in a moment. Now, I want to get the modules in the frame between the frame rails, but there's a slight issue with that, specifically this big ass cross brace. I took care of this last time. Removing this will make the frame less stiff, which will affect handling and ride quality, but I will be adding a big piece of aluminum to the bottom that will act as a shear plate. Also some other structure to hold the battery case. This will somewhat help get that stiffness back, but not totally. In the Tesla, the modules are neatly stacked side by side, but I can't do that because my frame rails are too close together. What I can do is take the two outer modules and stack them on top of the two inner modules, sort of like a double stuffed 400 volt Oreo. Since I'm leaving the middle two where they are, this means I can use the existing Tesla battery case, or at least the middle part of it. The existing battery case has some nice features that I want to retain. The bottom of the case is a three millimeter aluminum shield and the modules have an air gap below them for protection from random road debris or whatever. These two I-beams attached to the bottom of the plate are structurally rigid and will help carry the load. They also already have all of the fastening features to hold the two middle modules. I can also tap the top of them to help hold the upper modules. In fact, the only real issue with using this case is these fat extrusions that are here at the front. My frame tapers forward at the front and these are kind of in the way. If they were instead at the rear, that would be great because they wouldn't be in the way and they would in fact help me attach the case to the Jaguar frame. Hey, what if I just flip the case around? The mounting features on the center modules seem to be symmetric, so this might be pretty easy. Might not be, but let's find out. I took some measurements off the Jaguar frame, wrote them down, and started cutting up the case to make it fit. The plan is to bolt it in from the bottom along the edges. There are a couple of things that I need to do to make this happen. First off, the bottom of the Jaguar frame is not parallel to the ground. The top is, but the bottom starts narrow at the rear and then gets wider. The frame is tall enough at the front to accommodate the stacked batteries, but not at the rear. I could bolt to the existing frame and just have the rear taller and then build a new higher floor inside the car. Or I could add some wedges along the battery case to make the bottom of the battery parallel to the ground. I went with the second choice. To accomplish this, I bought some two inch by two inch aluminum tube that was a quarter inch thick. Then I cut an angle along the edge to make it into a really long wedge. Then I just welded it into the modified battery case. Unfortunately, this makes my battery the lowest part of the car in most of the middle and the front, which is not ideal. But with these aluminum tubes, if anything catches the edge of the battery, the load pretty much goes directly into the vehicle frame. I also added some skids on the sides. These skids serve two purposes. One is to be a sacrificial replaceable piece that can scrape on things. They also allow me to countersink them and use flathead bolts. This will make it so that I don't have bolt heads sticking down. But now I have to figure out how to actually bolt it to the frame. The frame is a closed section and I don't want to bolt all the way through it, nor do I want to make spacers or drill holes in the top to access some nuts. So I made a nut plate. A nut plate is just a strip of steel with holes drilled in it and nuts welded to it. To make sure all the holes lined up, I flipped the frame upside down and sandwiched everything together. Skid plate, battery case, nut plate, and frame. The nut plate will go inside the frame once it's done, but for now it gets drilled outside. I then drilled 10 holes on each side, the same size of my bolts, 3 8 in this case. Get it? This case, because it's a battery case. The nut plates need nuts welded to them, otherwise they're just plates. So I welded nuts at each one of the holes, making sure to weld them on the correct side. Then I countersunk the skid plate holes and painted them. I also added smaller holes to the skid plate and the nut plate so that I could bolt them to the case and the frame respectively, just to kind of hold them in place until I get the big bolts in. Fortunately for me, there's a little opening on the frame at the rear, so I just slid the nut plates in there. This is where things got weird. 
As I slid them in, stuff started coming out of the holes that I drilled, sand from the sandblaster, which I kind of expected, but also some rocks and some dirt, which I kind of also expected, just not the quantity that came out. I lifted up the front of the frame with my engine hoist to let some of the junk roll out the back, and then I just hit it with a mallet to get the rest out. I hit this thing for five solid minutes before stuff stopped coming out. Sand, dirt, rocks, rusty bits of metal, shells from nuts. There's actually shells from nuts all around this car. How did nutshells get everywhere? I assume there was an entire family of squirrels using this car as a house for some period of time. With the front of the car lifted up, I used the opportunity to install the lower control arms. We'll talk more about that in a later video. At the front of the battery case, my aluminum wedges stopped being a wedge and left a little empty triangle. I fixed this by gluing in some shims. These are the shims you use in house construction on things like door frames. Then I just bolted it all together. It actually went pretty well. I had assumed that some of the bolts wouldn't line up and maybe I'd have eight bolts on each side or I'd have to re-drill things out, but they all went in. Then I remembered that I wanted to add a little foam strip to keep the water out, so I had to unbolt it and put the strip on and then punch out the holes and reassemble everything. Now the fun part, installing the actual battery modules. This was not super easy. Before I started, I marked the mounts with a Sharpie and I marked the mounting locations on the case with a gold Sharpie. This would help me to line up everything if for some reason it wasn't actually symmetric. I dropped the modules in the same way I pulled them out with my engine hoist and some straps. The bottom of these modules is delicate, like I mentioned, so I was trying to be careful. Once I had them in their spot, I sort of had to pry them up with a pry bar to get the metal clips in. These clips go under these little shelves. Fortunately, all the clips lined up with the shelves. I don't know what these things are called, so I'm just going to call them shelves. Once the metal clips are in, you just screw the bolts on top, and that lifts the module up and squishes it against the top of this aluminum extrusion. This is how they get the module to levitate half an inch above the bottom of the battery case. Kind of a weird thing about this, the modules have a tab to locate into the extrusions. Well, there are slots in the right locations to locate these modules backward. I'm guessing this is because the two extrusions are the same part left to right to make things easier. They just mill two slots. In any case, worked out well for me. Thanks, Tesla battery design guy. I no longer hate you. Installing the top modules was much easier. I just dropped them on top. The outside has tabs that I'll just screw into the aluminum extrusions, and I have some ideas for supporting and holding the little shelves on the inside too. These rear posts here need to be trimmed down, that's going to be fun. I need to add new bus bars to connect the modules at the front, I also need to extend the BMS wires, the outhouse still needs to go in the car, and I need to connect the battery to the outhouse, and also connect the outhouse to the motor. And then I need to seal up the battery case, make it somewhat watertight, but not before I run coolant hoses to all the modules. We'll get into some of that next time. I'll see you next Tuesday. I mean, like, I'll have a video up next Tuesday, not like see you in, well, you know what I mean. I'm not really sure what other questionable ideas I'm going to have for my cars in the future, but I can guarantee I will have them. So hit that subscribe button and find out. Thanks for watching. Uh -huh.